In this video, we will study about logistic regression. In our previous video, we had seen that a binary classification is a task of classifying a given input into two classes because it's binary classification. And we had seen an example that given an image, you have to classify whether it's a cat image or a non-cat image. So we can denote it by classes 1 and 0. So let's look at logistic regression, which is a way of uh, doing binary classification. So if you remember from our earlier video, uh, x, which is the input, was an x-dimensional vector. And uh, our task was given x we want an estimate y hat such that it denotes the probability of y being 1 given x. So we want to estimate what is the probability of y getting 1 given an input and that will be denoted by this estimated value of y. So uh, when we are doing logistic regression our parameters will also be w belonging to nx and b which will be a real number we will call it intercept and the output will be this y hat and how can you get uh, this output from x one thing you can do is w transpose x plus b uh, and this is what you do if you were doing linear regression. But uh, this is not well suited for our binary classification task uh, because uh, the this value, which is a linear combination of the input feature vectors defined by this uh, weight matrix and then we add intercept. This can take any value. It can even take negative value. It can take a very large positive value. But what we want, we want this y hat to be are denoting the probability of this being 1. So uh, if you look at this example, here these two are the possible values of y, 1 and 0. And let's say your model uh, says that y hat is 0 0.85. And this y hat denotes probability of y being equal to 1, given this image or in general x any input so y equal to 1 means it's a cat image and what is the probability that this is a cat image uh, our model says 0.85 that is it is almost certain that it's a cat image so this is what we mean by this whole thing so uh, we want this value to be between 0 and 1 that's why what we do we add a sigmoid function on this. So whatever value we get, we add sigmoid over it. And what sigmoid function does, it returns a value between 0 and 1. And why is it so? Let's see the plot of sigmoid function. So if this is g, then this is sigmoid of z. then its plot is something like this and this value is 1 at 0 this value is 0 0.5 and here it's close to 0 and the actual formula of sigmoid function is sigmoid of z is 1 over 1 plus e raised to the power minus g so when you see g is 0 then this quantity will become 1 because anything raised to the power 0 is 1. So it will be 1 over 1 plus 1 or 2. So it will be 0 0.5. And that's why it's 0 0.5 at the g equal to 0. And now let's see when g is very large. When g is very large, then minus g will be negative infinity. Or this is 1 over e to the power z. So 1 over very large number is 0. So it becomes 1 over 1, which is 1. And when g is 
very large negative quantity that is in this case uh, then this negative and this negative sign cancels and this is e raised to the power very big number which is huge and 1 over uh, infinity it's not exact infinity but a very very big quantity and this will tend to 0 and this will also tend to be 0 not uh, tend to be 1 not exactly 1 so this is uh, what is represented here in the graph also and you should remember this so it can never take a value outside 0 and 1 so uh, we have got our job done our job was to get a value between 0 and 1 and we can get that using this sigmoid function and uh, in order to estimate uh, the parameters w and b when we are doing linear uh, sorry logistic regression such that y hat becomes a good estimate of uh, estimate of the actual chance of y being equal to 1 and uh, in order to train our logistic regression parameters w and b we need to define a cost function so in the next video we will uh, see a cost function for our logistic regression